Hi, Marissa. Thank you so much for joining me for this conversation. Yes. I feel kind of like I'm in the presence of royalty since you are a top, our top educator at Gloss Genius right now. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd love to start at the beginning um, and learn a little bit about what your early days were like uh, in your quest to become a hairstylist and like what that means to you. So early on, I mean, like I was a kid, I knew after I destroyed like every single Barbie that I owned, did every like person in my hair's family that I wanted to do hair. Um, I was super nervous about it. So I would like talk myself out of it a lot and tried different ventures, tried going to like community college. That was a, a fail. So then I just like took the leap. But then I, of course, didn't like any schools that were necessarily around me. So then I kept looking. So then I found one that was definitely an interesting year of my life. It's beauty school is no joke. And I think a lot of people think that it is and it is not by any means. Um, and then once I graduated, I found a salon. Well, I still was a little bit nervous. Took my time trying to find a salon and then found a salon and I stayed there. I'm a creature of habit. I stayed there for 12 years um, before I quickly realized at a little before the 12 year mark that I needed to, it was time. Like I needed to be able to grow. Things had changed there. Um, but being a hairdresser is scary and it's a lot of work. And a lot of people don't give hairdressers the credit that we deserve because it is, it's intense it is very intense and when I decided to go out on my own it was all at the same time of having a new fam basically family just had a baby had been in a house like me and my significant other now husband we had moved in together like it was a thousand different things all at once and then I'm like and also it happened uh, a week before Christmas so I was like oh sure no problem let's let's just make this all happen <laughs> <laughs> wow Needless to say, you like to pile things on. Yes. I know that you're currently planning your wedding, which is happening oh, yeah. in a couple days from now. Yeah, I and think the countdown is at like eight days, I think. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's unreal. Yeah. So you've got your wedding going on. You're managing to be the top educator at Gloss Genius, and you have completed tons of events personally and professionally. Yes. Um, how do you do it all? Um, no lie. I cry a lot <laughs> out of like happy tears and stress tears. And I have my moments. Um, but thankfully my husband and my family and my friends and my coworkers and my Sola know that I, I just have to have my like dramatic moments and I make tons of lists. I have literally lists and notes of what I have to do in my my calendar, my planner, I have a million, half of them have the same thing, but it like, makes me feel better. <laughs> I'm like the most like organized, unorganized person ever, but I somehow, I make it work. I try at least. You're, you're trying and it's showing off. Your, your effort is there. So pat yourself on the back for that. <laughs> um, I want to go back to what you said about how beauty school is no joke. Yeah. If someone was just starting out, maybe they are, you know, on their second or third career um, and wanting to become a hairstylist, or maybe they're fresh out of um, school and wanting to get out there. What would you suggest for someone who was looking for a beauty school? One of my things was at the time, which they're not here anymore, but at the time when I was looking, there were a lot of beauty schools still open that were the school that would have every like Wednesday, a big RV bus would pull up, drop the little old ladies off. They'd get their hairs, you know, their hair washed and set and do it. And I was like, that is, I, that is not me. I don't want to do that. Like, and then there were other schools that focused only on, um, like one specific brand or like line. And I knew that majority of the salons that were around me where I would potentially work weren't those. So I didn't want to spend my 10 to 12 months focusing on that brand and then basically graduating 
and then going to a salon that I learned nothing about with that and then having to like re you know um so I was fortunate enough there was a well I guess I was fortunate but then also it was really scary because there was a school that had just opened in my area they focused on more than one line but one of them was one that I was like very familiar with and then I knew most salons carried um but I was the second full-time class to start. And then the second, I was part of the second full-time class to actually graduate. So it was kind of one of those things where it was like, I was just taking a chance on myself and on them because I didn't know anybody that had gone to that school until I started there. And for all I know, they could have been the worst school school ever. Um, But like once I toured it and then just like looking at certain things, like, I mean, they were a little bit trendier. They weren't the typical school where it was going to be like all these old ladies coming, like all of that stuff. It was like much more like geared and focused on things that I like saw myself doing in my career. So that was why I kind of like jumped in with them. Thank you for giving me that background. That, that's You're super welcome. helpful because it's amazing to see where you are now and it's helpful to know where you came from so that maybe someone else can see themselves in your shoes based on your struggle. We kind of talked about the challenges that you faced when you were starting out but working for someone else. Yeah. Let's talk about the transition from working for someone else to working for yourself. What did the early days of that transition look like? So for me, the early days of transitioning from a commission salon to a Sola, it was very chaotic. I had known for a little while that I wanted to make the leave from leaving my commission salon and going off and trying to do something of my own. Not honestly, not even hundred percent necessarily doing like a solo like this. I just knew there were a lot of changes that happened where I was and it was just time. Um, And then I kind of found out like a couple other girls were wanting to leave and they weren't necessarily sure if they wanted to like, same thing, like do a solo, do a suite, do just a different salon. So then we kind of started like working together to figure out what we wanted to do. Um, Then there were tons of changes that were happening in my life and then in the salon where I was in in that situation. But those first two weeks, honestly, I think would have been so much more dramatic and like stressful if it wasn't for the owner that we had of the Sola. He is actually the one who had told me about gloss. So then I was like, oh, okay. Like I didn't know anything else. Um, And so then once I, I like spent my night, like Uh, with gloss on the app like figuring stuff out and playing around with it and then I was like oh this is gonna be nothing (laughs) and it made it so much easier because it was like I didn't have to spend my time like calling all these different people that I had on my books like I could just shoot them you know a message right through my gloss app like I was like this is great like so that I feel like helped the transition of doing everything so much more what would you suggest to someone who is just starting out when you're just building out your own business So when you get out of school and you have your license, a lot of girls I found think that they should just go right onto their chair. Don't go right. Don't think that you like, yeah, there are some girls that are amazing when you're in beauty school. Okay. Become an assistant at a salon that you like, um, that have successful like stylists there. You need to be extremely humble and you need to not be somebody that thinks that they can work three days a week, get off early on Saturdays. Like you have to be prepared to be always having a stack of business cards with you. I mean, on your day off going wherever you go and commenting on somebody's hair, giving them your card, like just nonstop and not being that person that is complaining that they're working. Cause you literally need to be prepared to work every single day just to like get in a habit and like, just get your name out there. And if you're, if whoever you're assisting for, like, you know, wants you to do extra things, like whether it be like, oh, you know, we're doing this event, but oh yeah, I'll always volunteer. Like you have to be prepared to work your behind off. That's like the biggest thing. Like if you're not prepared to like hustle and be motivated all the time, even when you have other crap going on, like it's not going to be an easy road for you. (laughs) So for someone who is just starting out, what would you suggest to look for in software? Definitely user-friendly. User-friendly for yourself and user-friendly for your guest. Um, 
you want something that isn't going to like screw you in the end where with gloss, like I don't ever feel like that's a situation. Like I, I'm not one that like, oh, I checked my bank account today and I got charged this from so-and-so and this from so, and like, wait, like it's a surprise at the end of the day, like you aren't going to experience that. So that is something like making sure it's cost effective glosses, especially in 2021, like customer service is so important. So I feel like with gloss, like I've said from before everything that had happened, like it was just the easiest. They had the best customer service. Like I would be shocked when I would like send an email or like try to get an answer to a question. I'm like, oh, they already responded. Like it was shocking. So you want something that is like that. What should a professional look for in software to help them stand out? And how has Gloss Genius helped you with that? Like, I don't like to go with just whatever everybody's using. I want something that is, I, I've always wanted something that's different, unique, geared towards this industry. Um, when I heard about Gloss, obviously at the time, like I had used whatever my current salon had been using. So I knew how softwares worked. Um, but I wanted something that was like super stylish. I wanted something that was essentially smart and would do what I needed it to do and only what I needed it to do. Um, I didn't necessarily want something that, yeah, I went to, you know, the local like fair and I bought something and they used this booking payment that or system that I'm going to use at my salon. Um, I wanted something that people were going to be like, oh, wow, this is so cool. Like I have, I, my key too was in the beginning after I'd signed up, a lot of people were like, oh, I'd never heard of that, but this is so nice. This is so easy. Oh my God. Like your site is so cute. So those things I was like, okay, I made, I made the right choice. And then once I got into it, I was like, this is perfect. Like it's literally so easy. <laughs> Can you share your Gloss Genius story and what features make your experience. Once I did sign up and then started following on Instagram and like really seeing everything. And honestly, like, I feel like during that time, you guys gloss was just starting out. So I feel like we've kind of like grown together. Um, one of my biggest things, cause I, I definitely mentioned in the beginning how I am such a organized, unorganized person. I love, 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 love that gloss texts me all of my notes. I can put all of my notes in, but then my biggest thing is I can just go on my app and like, I, if I need to get, you know, last year I did from this time to this time, like my reports, that is a huge thing. My tax, my tax guy appreciates gloss genius because it makes him, it makes it so much easier for him. Because like I said, I'm very scatterbrained and I try to stay organized and keep everything. And then I'm like, Oh wait, I don't know what this is. Hold on. And I just go right on my app and it's all laid out and it's so easy. Like I don't have to go through a million different things to get to it. I just go right to what I want and it's there. So that I, I think honestly, the reports is probably like by far my favorite thing. Um, and because then again, I'm always in competition with myself. So then I'm forever checking what I'm at now compared to what I was, you know, for a year ago. Did you have a mentor during this process or do you still have a mentor that you look up to? So in the beginning, the, who I mainly assisted for, he was the owner. Um, I definitely looked up to him a lot, but then I definitely, I would say like as a whole, like most of the girls that worked there had all assisted for him at one point. And I really like, I mean, there were girls that I would see what they were doing and I'm like, God, like, this is great. Like I, they like, they make it look like it's so easy. So like, I definitely looked to them a lot. Um, I would say now, like there's like a handful of like girls and there's a couple girls that I had followed that are through gloss that are educators with me that I, before I ever was an educator that I followed and I was like, Oh God, like, look at what they're doing and things like that. So I definitely, I don't think I have like one person. Um, but I definitely have like a handful that like are my go-tos that if I need a question or I have a question or if there's like things that I'm like unsure about, like I would go to and ask. So that's how you would become a hairstylist when like bar none, like getting to that point, paying your dues, giving all that you've got, you know, first one there, last one to leave. Everyone yeah. knows that, that ladder that you got to climb because yeah. 100. Um, what are your like go-tos? Like what were some things that you typically like look up or want to explore? So the main thing that I, like, I'll just go for instance, 
would be like off of my Instagram. But I mean, I have, I don't know if other stylists are like this, but I have 7,000 boards on my Pinterest and on my Instagram that are color, that are extensions, that are, I just recently signed up with a girl who taught um, a class that I did for extensions. She's offering her own um, like monthly type service. So I signed up for that. So I have a board for her. Like, so I'm definitely geared towards, Oh, like bridal updos and braids. Like I, but literally just 7,000 different boards. Like my brain is always somewhere else. <laughs> Pinterest is key. And I yes. love the saved boards on Instagram. I also take advantage yes. of that. Before you started Hair by Marissa, did you have to get a certification or training outside of your license to open your own business? So I was fortunate enough that the, one of the guys that was part of the solo franchise that I'm in, um, he was extremely helpful with helping myself and a few of the other girls get started. Um, whether it be like, okay, are you going to do a DBA? Or are you going to have an LLC? Those are super important that like, I don't, that and like knowing like, okay, like about your sales tax and, um, like little things like that. I'm like, oh, okay. Like I have to get a business account and things like that. I'm like, okay. Um, but he, so luckily for me to go out on my own, like, I was glad that I had somebody like him. He's also the one that steered me in the direction of gloss. Um, but then it was getting in here. I, I kind of based my pricing and off of like what I was doing at my old salon. Um, but then too, it's hard because then I enjoy, I love selling retail or because my, I'm very, if I love something, like I want you to love it. Um, so then bringing retail in that one is one that like, you really have to make sure you have like researched and bring the right product in. Um, I do, I, so I have started using certain products in here once I went off on my own. Then recently during COVID, I decided like, I think I'm ready to switch it up a little bit. And now that I do that and have brought in new lines, I'm constantly trying to do, um, like different, different ways to help people get into the new product. So like, I always do like a product of the month. I like to feature certain products. Um, I'm up, I'm just obsessed with products. Like, like I said, if I love something, I want you to love it. How much of your, your hair styling expertise is styling and coloring versus cutting and major changes like that? I do your color. I do your cut. I do your finish. I, I'm super into like doing bridal hair. So my day is spent juggling, but I would say I'm much more geared towards the color finishing and then like bridal styling. At what point did you figure out what your specialty was going to be? I knew I could never be a stylist that only did men's haircuts all day long. Like I, I could not do that. Props to the people who do that. I cannot do that. So I just think I always knew and I knew doesn't matter if like, I just, I just think I always knew when I told myself like, well, you're going to have to be good at doing color. Like that's, and the person who I assisted with in the beginning, like he was very good with color, but then he would be set in his ways about a lot of stuff. So then it was like, I would catch myself like, okay, well, why is he doing that? Like, this is, he, this is the way you should do it. Or like, he wasn't ready to like venture into certain looks that to go with like the times. And so then I knew like, okay, well, this is what you would do, or this is what I wanted to do. So then I knew like, okay, this is, this is the area that I want to be in. And like I said, I told myself like, you have no choice. Like you're going to be able to do this and you're going to be good at color. Cause I'm not doing haircut, only haircuts, whether it be for men or women or kids only, like I would not do that. I want to talk about community and how that plays into not only your experience at Gloss Genius, but how you have built your network as a hairstylist in a met small city in Metro Detroit. <laughs> what would you suggest, suggest to someone who was trying to build out their community um, and, and figure out where they belong? Social media is key. Um, like I said, when I started out that this was not really like promoting on, you know, Facebook and there was no TikTok and Instagram was still kind of new, but now it's like, I see people post all the time. Like, I just don't know how to build my clientele. Well, Hey, there's the old school way. And you go to 
every place that's by you, any place that is around your, this is what I, I used to do. You go to every tanning salon, every place that was like somewhat in a decent like range around your salon and hi, make little goodie bags with like, like I have a rep that is always willing to give me samples and things like that. So you staple your card to a sample, tape it to put in a little baggie, you stop at every place and just leave it. Or when you like, for instance, yesterday I went out to dinner and I mean, I've been doing this forever and I have a full book, but I still left my card with my tip and my bill and that I feel like when in doubt, if social media, if it's a struggle for you, when in doubt, like the old school, like just put your feet to the ground and make it happen. When it comes to also trying to get your name out there, like I always encourage clients um, who are on social media and like in Facebook and when they see people post like, oh, you know, I'm looking for a stylist and this and that, there's always gonna be different group, in, uh, different Facebook groups online that people are looking for somebody. Encourage your existing clients or yourself to go in there, tag yourself, talk to the, the person that's looking. I'm in a million different hairdressing groups too for just for advice and to see like, like not necessarily other struggles of stylists, but like things that are going in other places. Cause I mean, I, like you said, I'm in Metro Detroit. Like there are other, like if you have questions, like that's the best way too for hairstylists, like starting off, like sometimes girls feel intimidated to talk to people that they work with just cause they don't want to sound stupid or they're like just whatever. And that's an easy outlet to go on into these Facebook groups and get advice from people, other hairstylists needing, for, if you need formula help, you can go on there. Like most of the time I, people are just like, so wanting to help in there that it's a good avenue for, especially for new stylists. Boundaries. You said that this is something that you're working on for yourself and a goal that you have for 2022. Yes. Are there any other goals that you have around this or other goals you're setting yourself up for? So every year, my goal is, my main goal is the same, one of the same ones that I'm forever trying to push myself harder than I did the year before, whether it be what it shows on paper that I did. Like I'm very, I'm very goal oriented and I'm very driven by my income. Um, I like to succeed. I like to, I'm very competitive. So whether it be myself with somebody else or myself against myself or like with myself, that is like my goal. But then also going off of that, I need to learn how to set some boundaries because I struggle very hard and you can ask my husband and I struggle very hard. <laughs> as far as uh, how much hairdressers and hairstylists make or how long it takes to make that what would you suggest to someone who is just starting out in the beginning I definitely feel like how am I how am I ever going to move out of my mom's house <laughs> like you do the whole like living paycheck to paycheck trying not to when you're a hairdresser I feel like you definitely live a different type of a life in the beginning and I think all of us go through that and it's the, oh, I got, we got off 20 minutes early. Like, let's go to the bar. Let's do this. Let's spend money. Let's go here. And just, you just have to be driven and just remember that eventually, like you're going to get past the stage and then you, and you'll start to make money. You just have to be focused on that. And you just have to keep telling yourself, like, I don't, just because I have, it doesn't mean I need to spend it because it's de definitely a career where it can be very up and down. And you have your days where you want to cry in the back room because I have no money. I'm not making anything. And then it, the next day you're like, wow, like today was a great day. Um, but I definitely think that it's a very overworked like field. Like we work extremely hard for what we make. My biggest thing though, which will sound crazy is it took, I mean, I worked at my last salon for 12 years and I would say by my year eight, I really like realized like, wow, I, I do really good. Like I'm doing really good. But then you, for me, at least I realized, yeah, I do really good. But then I'm like sharing so much of it with somebody who's not doing any of this. <laughs> so then it, it really took after 12 years, leaving that situation and going off on my own and not saying that that is for everyone um, because it is 
it is a lot of work being your own boss, but it's so much more rewarding seeing all of the work you put in and seeing like what you're getting out of it and like what you can have at the end of the day. Like just, it, it's just like a different feeling. Like some days I'm like, wow, I like, I'm the one in charge. Like I, I can do this, you know, like it's a really, really good, good feeling. If you could give a TED talk on any subject, what would it be? Uh, well, it would honestly be becoming your own boss in like a situation like this as a hairstylist, or <laughs> it would be about gloss. 